2,240 pages, more than a thousand pages less than what I managed to read in June. Hi folks, it's Abby from Abby of Pelinor and today I'm going to go through the books that I managed to get through and to read in July. And it's not many. <laughs> So a lot of this was catch up at the very beginning of the month for things that I didn't manage to finish in June. I had a good reading month in June, but I had some of my TBR that I didn't finish. And then I just never was able to kind of get back into reading again for the rest of the month. Um, so I struggled through. This one big one down here is an audiobook. These upwards were all finished like early in the month. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't the best reading month. <laughs> it wasn't the best reading month for me. I really didn't get through my TBR. That was my main thing. Um, I, I read three books on my TBR. My TBR had nine books in it, and I read three of them. Um, so yeah, it was still a good reading month. I still shouldn't complain. But basically, I, I was stressing myself out. My mental health wasn't great last month. Uh, I'm fine, but it just wasn't peak. I wasn't reading, uh, so. Let's just dive into the books. So first up we have Perilous Times by Thomas D. Lee. This was my Goldsboro GSFF book for the month before and this was my highest rated book of this month. I ended up giving this five stars. This is amazing, it's brilliant, it's highly underrated and you all need to pick it up. <laughs> just to put that out there straight away. So it is an Arthurian tale that involves dragons. Already, already, people are picking it up. Um, and it's set in slightly in the near future where basically everything's collapsing, everything's dying, like global warming is atrocious, uh, human rights are atrocious, like everything is devolving um, and it's about like can King Arthur come back and save us hmm. and should he and all the magic involved and things like that. Brilliantly written, absolutely adored it, uh, I also do want to deeply point out that Lee is fantastic at writing women in my opinion. Uh, Thomas D. Lee is a man and I have not read very many men who write women really well. If you hadn't told me the gender of the author, I wouldn't, I would have assumed it was a woman because I didn't think, I, I don't think I've read a man who's written a woman this well. There are men who write women just fine with no issues, but like this was actually actively good writing of women. Like, you know, they're, they're actually three dimensional characters with thoughts and feelings and they don't just act the exact same as men but happen to have tits like it's a whole like it, it's just very very well done and I feel like that needs to be mentioned because yeah if you don't read male fantasy authors or sci-fi authors um because of how they usually depict women this is an exception you need to add it to your list also dragons Arthurian knights climate change feminism it's just this is just a brilliant book also this cover is gorgeous uh, but yeah so absolutely beautiful absolutely love it five star read my best book of this month i was gonna say by far that's a lie there is one other that was very close uh, which was near the end of my stack but it's amazing it's art oh, just you're all missing out you're all missing out then three stars a silly little reread and that is kittens in the kitchen by lucy daniels the first book in the uk for the animal arc series this is a fun little book it is about a young girl named mandy who's around 10 years old and her adoptive parents run a veterinary practice and it's her kind of saving animals in her community i read this as part of the nostalgia prompt for the total bollocks read along we did the live show on my channel last weekend if i put this up when i want to so go and check that out in the live tab on my channel page if you would like to hear all of our various thoughts i read three books for nostalgia this was one of them very fun it's just a chapter book like this was nostalgic for me because i read it as a child then lyriel by garth nix this is the second book in the sabriel series i gave this one 4.5 stars this was a continuation on after having started this book last month so i was just finishing it up this month and i really enjoyed it didn't enjoy it as much as sabriel it's the same as the graceling series in that the first book is set in a place and a time with certain people and the second book and the books following on from that second book are set almost a generation after that following the children or those of that age onwards of the people in the first book um, and whilst I am now invested in these people's lives I wanted more from Sabriel <laughs> so I was a little disappointed that I didn't get my my Sabriel content that I wanted um, and so it was kind of, you know, getting reinvested with new characters as well as still having the old characters to carry on. 
which is why I got 4.5. Garth Nick's writing is really really good. Like Australian authors at that point in like the late noughts, early noughts, apologies Nyx, apologies. Then 3.5 stars to Chlorine by Jade Song. This was an arc sent to me by Footnote. Thank you very very much to the folks over at Footnote for that. And this is a contemporary with a magical twist about a young Chinese girl who starts learning to swim, eventually starts swimming competitively in the United States, um, and how she then decides that she wants to become a mermaid. That's the magical twist side of it, but then there's also a lot of the discussions on the trauma, both of being non-white in the continental United States, um, as well as also being in this kind of swimming training scenario, not dissimilar to what we hear about gymnastics training. My ARC copy has got content uh, warnings in the front and the back, um, which mentions kind of slightly how they relate to her, as well as what is in here. So. Uh, Discussions and instances of racism, misogyny, self-harm, eating disorders, homophobia, depression and sexual violence. Uh, and it discusses that slightly more, it's just a paragraph. But yes, this was a 3.5 for me, because I don't tend to read contemporary, uh, it's not really my genre as much. The fantastical side of this was really interesting. It's more contemporary than it is fantastical. Uh, and I did still enjoy the contemporary aspect of this. It was still really well written, really interesting, but it just... I get grabbed by the science fiction fantasy and this didn't quite do that. So definitely a good book. Highly recommend if you're into like Dark Mermaid, like contemporary primarily. It was a good time, but just a 3.5. It's still a good rating. Like if that was out of 10, oh my god maths, that would be a 7. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, so yeah, 7 out of 10. Pretty damn good. Then another reread for the nostalgia prompt, and that was Five on a Treasure Island by Enid Blyton. This one I gave four stars. I know that some people were curious uh, as to how these books hold up. Can't speak to the rest of the books, all the other 20 books in this 21 book series, but I can say that this one is fine. This is fine to read, it's not problematic. There's four kids and a dog going off solving adventures. Yes, this is the basis of Scooby-Doo. If you are American, you're more likely to know Scooby-Doo. I fucking love Scooby-Doo. No wonder I grew up on these. Um, yeah, really fun, really short, really easy to read. Um, and this one involves bullions, which is always fun to read about. So yeah, this was fun. Again, I'd like to reread them all at some point because then I'd be able to tell which ones do stand the test of time because I remember as a child <laughs> raised by a bunch of white people in Britain, surrounded by a bunch of white people, um, that I found some of them questionable, which, all things considered, is like, wow, the eight-year-old found it questionable? What are you writing? Uh, so I am interested to go back and see just how bad they were. Um, but yeah, this one is perfectly fine. So if you'd like to go back for the nostalgia hit, you can do so with this one with no issue. Then the book that came so, so close to Perilous Times, and that was Stolen History by Sathanam Sanghera. Now this is another one for the nostalgia reads, but this was not a reread. This was a first time read, it's one of the few first time reads I could think of, like on my TBR, that would work for nostalgia. And this is a non-fiction book for children, all about British Empire, how it shaped us, colonialism, etc. The author wrote Empire Land, which is a non-fiction for adults. I do intend to pick that up at some point. This was done absolutely fantastically. Five stars, it's just absolutely brilliant. So, like, don't get me wrong, this is for children. Like, you will have a fun time reading this. Uh, but also, I learned a fair amount from this. Like, lots of stuff that, at least when I was in school, which, to be fair, was some time ago, I'm getting old, I didn't learn about this stuff in school. I didn't learn about how Britain was involved in these things, in these aspects. His parents are Punjabi immigrants, he is British, uh, and so he has a non-white perspective on this. Obviously that doesn't encompass the entirety of the non-white, non-stereotypically British perspective, but it does then mean that he's not coming at it from my lens, for example. And he's surprisingly forgiving to those who uh, say that colonialism brought some good things to the world. Uh, more forgiving than I would be, uh, and gives a lot of grace, so I do have to give him 
props for being willing to do that because uh, I would not be that forgiving to these people. But absolutely brilliantly done. It also doesn't shy away from the negatives. It doesn't go in any sort of explicit detail. This is aimed at children. It's not going to give them nightmares but it also doesn't sugarcoat things. So for example when speaking about the treatment of enslaved people in the North Americas they're not going to go into detail. These children who read this aren't going to find out what was done to the enslaved people, but they will know that they were enslaved and that the conditions were awful. So it, it finds that balance very, very well. This was sent to me by Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe. Uh, she was just doing an unhaul, she had too many books, and thank you so much because this was amazing, like absolutely amazing. It's making me want to read more children's non-fiction which I didn't expect, and also now I need to read Empire Land. Um, the only, the only bad thing about this book, it's not even bad, <laughs> these kids non-fiction books always, you know, like, reference celebrities to, like, try and get you to, like, understand the historical figures. They did it when I was reading kids non-fiction books back in the day. And the celebrity they mention here is Marcus Rashford, a footballer for Man United, if you don't know. He's younger than me. That was my only negative from this book. <laughs> okay, then next up is another one that I was finishing after starting barely any of it last month, and that is The Butcher by Laura Cat Young. I gave this book 3.5 stars. This one is set in a world where people are punished for doing misdeeds and wrongdoings uh, in this dystopian world, so that sort of misdeeds and wrongdoings, by being physically mauled. They might have a finger removed, they might lose an arm if it's a very bad offence, uh, and somebody called the Butcher is the one who does this. And we are following the point of view of the daughter of the Butcher, who will become a Butcher in her stead in the future. Um, and it's a discussion on the morality, on forgiveness, on fighting back, on combining as a people. Um, I do think that the writing style just wasn't quite perfect for me, it didn't grab me, um, I, I wasn't fully invested the entire time. It was interesting, and it was a quick read, but it was hard to kind of stay focused and stay in this world. Um, it also was a little stereotypical, you can kind of guess everything in the direction that this is going in. Um, there is a young man in here, you can guess most of the direction that that's going in. Um, so yeah, it was a little stereotypical unfortunately, but I do still think it's a good read. It is still aimed at teenagers, so those are less likely to have read quite as many books, depending on the teen, uh, and so then they should still enjoy this. They may be the first, second, third time they've come across the trope rather than the hundredth. Um, so yes, fun book. I'm glad I picked it up. It's one of the very few books that I've bought as a cover buy in the past like five years. I think this is one of the only ones. I saw it in a shop, I liked the cover and I picked it up. Um, so yeah, glad I read it. Love the cover. The cover of my aesthetic completely. It wasn't as dark as I would have liked. Um, I feel like even though it is a teen book it still could have went darker. It tells you about, you know, like the removal of fingers but it doesn't kind of bring you emotionally into it too much. Uh, it's not even like the the descriptions of the it's not decapitating, but the chopping. Um, it doesn't even need to do that, it just doesn't kind of bring you into the emotions of it as much as it could do to kind of bring out that kind of horrifying aspect. But I don't think that's what the author was actually aiming for, it's just what I was hoping for. So yes, an interesting book. Um, one that if you're curious about, like sure, check it out, but it wasn't my perfect cup of tea. And then my final book was a four star read, and that is Jade City by Fonda Lee. This was one of the two books that I was reading from my Waypoint Full Moon book box. If you want to see, is it that corner? If you want to see my unboxing opening video of that, you can watch that up here. And I'm still currently re filming a vlog because I'm reading the other book still. I'm reading very slowly this month. Um, but yes, this was the first one that I read. And this is a high fantasy that is kind of um, Hong Kong gangster films and The Godfather and that sort of thing. I will say that I was not expecting just how male focused this would be. This is such like a dick swinging book. So much of this book is just men swinging their dicks about, trying to pretend that they've got a bigger dick than anybody else, when in reality they're all just idiots. But I also haven't seen The Godfather or any Hong Kong gangster films, because I don't watch films. Uh, so that may have been more predictable to any of you who have done that. 
<laughs> so I went into this not actually knowing what I was expecting um, and it wasn't quite what I had wanted but that's fully my fault. I did end up enjoying it. I think that the female characters that are in here uh, are done really well. Obviously Fonda Lee is female uh, as far as I know. I don't find this female. Um, and she writes them really well, fleshed out. They're not just strong because they're like the men with the dick swinging. There's different strengths to them which we always love, we always adore. Uh, and the actual concept of the jade itself, so in this world jade, the stone, gives certain people essentially magical powers, they get extra strength, extra endurance, um, extra fighting ability, and so there are different gangs in this city uh, of Janlun who compete to control more of the area and the fighters of the gang have this jade. So I was hoping for more of the jade specifically, instead it was more of the... I was hoping for more of the politics of the jade, not the politics of the gangs that control the jade. And I know that that makes no sense, but it's like a very fine distinction, and that's why I was expecting. It was just a bit too much dick swinging for me. But still, I did still give it four stars. I was originally going to give it three, but it sat with me. It's still in my head. I'm still interested in where the series goes. I do think it's going to be a great jumping off point for the series. It wasn't what I was expecting, but still quite interested in where things go. So that is the final book that I read. Uh, in total I listened to 14 hours and 44 minutes of audiobook, which was nice because I haven't listened to any audiobook in a while. So I'm, I'm trying to get back into the swing of it and doing it while I'm working. You know, something useful. She says she's not listened to uh, any audiobook while she's been working for two days, but still, still, still. But let me know what your favourite book of last month was. Like I said, for me, it was Perilous Times. I adored this. It's such a good book. Highly, highly recommend Perilous Times. Like, oh, it's just, it's just so good. Uh, I read most of Perilous Times, i.e. all of it, apart from 91 pages last month. <laughs> so it feels weird to have it be this month's favourite. So I guess technically this month's favourite would be Stolen History. So yeah, these were my favourites as I hit myself. Wig on. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, so let me know what your favourite book of this past month was and if you've read any of these because I would love to hear your thoughts. If you'd like to see what I end up reading next month, what I plan to read, what I end up reading, and also my reading vlog for the Waypoint Books for Moon box, then please do hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for watching folks and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye!